Valve just announced they're ramping up production big time for Q3, and there's a whole lot of other news no one is talking about. Let's get into it. What's good, Deck Gang? Deck Daddy here, and I'm ready to talk about this week's Steam Deck and PC gaming news. If you enjoy these videos, make sure to hit the like button. That's how the algorithm knows to spread it to more people. And if you want to stay up to date with Steam Deck every week, just subscribe. I have a lot of fun videos coming up leading up to my big Q3 review, so set notifications to all if you don't want to miss a thing. Of course, we have to start with the big news from today. Just before 1 p.m. Eastern today, the On Deck Twitter account tweeted this, quote, Hello, some great news on the production front. We just sent the last batch of Q2 emails and we'll start sending Q3 reservation emails on the 30th. Production has picked up and after today we'll be shipping more than double the number of Steam Decks every week. End quote. This is absolutely tremendous news. First of all, it's good to hear that Q2 folks should all have gotten their emails by now, putting Valve one batch ahead of their own commitment. I'm also ecstatic that Valve are going to be able to get Steam Decks into people's hands at a much quicker pace now. There's a couple important things to note here. First is that while some of the graphics card shortage has been alleviated by the crypto crash, there are still a lot of supply chain issues more broadly. So the fact that Valve are able to commit to more than doubling their output clearly shows a high level of confidence in being able to achieve that, especially considering they were able to meet their promise for Q2. I think it probably also shows that the pre-orders for the Steam Deck are not slowing down and demand for this platform remains high. Another thing I want to note is that I've been keeping an estimate of how many Steam Decks have been shipped with every batch and a total of how many have been shipped so far. I released a video a few months back with my methodology, so if you want to know how I'm calculating it, go check that out. I've had some sales analysts look at the methodology and it seems sound so far. In any case, my current tally is just over a quarter million Steam Decks shipped so far. Most of these were in Q2. Additionally, the pace has been extremely steady with Valve shipping approximately 20,000 Steam Decks per week. So if my estimates are to be believed, we're looking at nearly an additional half million units being delivered in Q3 alone. This will put Valve at 750,000 Steam Decks shipped as we enter the holiday season, leaving them with more than enough runway to clear the 1 million milestone by the end of the year. I love to see it, and obviously there are big things for the Steam Deck up ahead. The last thing to note here is that as we approach Q3, your ETAs will likely be updated. If the past is anything to go by, then chances are that everyone in the After Q3 group will be broken up into two categories. The lucky ones are going to get a Q4 ETA and everyone else will get an after Q1 2023 ETA. So if you're in the after Q3 group, keep your eyes peeled for that update in the next week. By the way, here's where I need you to go crazy in the comments. If you're Q3, make sure to let me know. All right, that's the biggest news for today, but I do have a few more interesting stories that no one is talking about. I'm going to save those for the end of the video, but for now, let's talk about the Steam Summer Sale. The latest Steam Summer Sale launched this week and it's generated a lot of buzz. I think with the latest NextFest being the best one ever, and this Steam Sale being one of the best ever in a long time, Valve is generating a lot of interest in those that are new to Steam, thanks to the Steam Deck. I don't want to do game recommendations in this video because I can go on forever, but if you think I should do some game recommendation videos for this Summer Sale, let me know in the comments. I have a ton of stuff I want to share, but you guys probably already have your own massive wish list. One thing I want to note, however, is that despite all the hype for this summer sale, please set a budget and try to stick to it. I know times is hard, and despite that, you might be tempted to build up your Steam library with your shiny new Steam Deck either in hand or on the way. I want to encourage you to buy games that you'll play soon and save other purchases for the next sale. There are sales all the time, and I've said it before, but you can use a deal tracker like deals.gg to keep track of sales on games that you're interested in. One thing I've been playing a lot on the Steam Deck recently is the Jack and Daxter native PC port that was done by a few enthusiasts. This plays really well on the Steam Deck, significantly better than the PS2 emulation on the Steam Deck. Both run at 60fps, but the image quality on the native port is much much better and you can get double the battery life using the port. This PC port is said to be 80% done and they're still doing some bug fixing, but I encourage you to check it out. I'm actually working on a video right now that goes over how to install it, but also goes over the story of how this PC port came to life. When I tell you I'm putting my heart and soul into this video, and I think it might be my best one yet. So be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that. 
One more game I've been playing a lot this week is Neon White. It's still on sale for 10% off for the duration of the summer sale. I mentioned this game in one of my videos last week, but I've continued to play it, and it's really great, y'all. You've been recruited from hell to do the demon hunting bidding of heaven citizens. You and your kind are called Neons, and there's a lot of Persona-like atmosphere and side quests, but the core gameplay is first-person platforming speedrunning, similar to games like Mirror's Edge and Ghost Runner. I've been trying to climb the leaderboard, but I have some friends that are a lot better than I am. If you too want to beat me in the leaderboards, then go ahead and add me to your friends list. I'll leave a link in the description. So there's been quite a few game announcements and leaks since my last news roundup. Dragon's Dogma 2 was announced during the Dragon's Dogma 10th anniversary stream. I actually missed this news because I was all in on Final Fantasy news, but this is huge. I've heard all the good things about the original, but I've never played it, so this has motivated me to finally rectify that. It looks like I'm not alone because Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen reached a new peak of concurrent players on Steam since February 2016, with a 24-hour peak of over 6,500 players. The hype is real, my friends. One of my favorite announcements for this week was that Into the Breach is getting a big free content update. There are new mechs, weapons, enemies, bosses, missions, pilots, and a more challenging difficulty mode. This releases on July 19th in conjunction with the release of the game onto the Netflix gaming service. For me personally, I've already put in dozens of hours into this game on the Switch and PC, and I think a new update like this combined with the context of playing it on the Steam Deck will absolutely reinvigorate my interest in the game. I'm glad they're doing this, and as a fan of both this game and FTL, subset games have already sold me on whatever else they're working on. As an aside, this game is currently available for 10 US dollars in the Steam Summer Sale. There also seems to be some movement on the release date for Uncharted on Steam. This comes courtesy of more, and if you look at the history of the game on Steam DB, you can actually see that the release date was updated twice in the last couple of days, first to October 19th and then to December 30th. It seems weird to have these two updates back to back, and my completely unsubstantiated theory is that October 19th is the right date, but they updated to December 30th after people noticed the first state in order to throw them off the scent. Either way, this port seems to be coming in later than most of us expected given when it was announced. As Moore points out, it was announced before God of War and Spider-Man, yet here we are still speculating about the date. It's possible that they ran into some development issues, which is fine. As usual, I'd rather they just take their time. Here's one that really hurts, hot on the heels of the success of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, the developer Vicarious Visions was planning a follow-up in the way of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4, but all these plans fell apart once the company got folded into Activision. I love the 1 and 2 remake, but I have a problem guys, I can't get it to work on the Steam Deck using SteamOS. I'm hereby announcing a bounty. The first person that can give me working instructions to get this game running on the Steam Deck will receive 10 US dollars. Same for Cruise and Blast on either Yuzu or Ryu Jinx. Anyway, yeah, so it seems like we could have had Tony Hawk 3 and 4, but sadly, no dice. Hopefully, Microsoft can figure this out if that deal goes through. Finally, it looks as though there's another From Software game already nearing completion. This news comes courtesy of an interview with Miyazaki by Japanese outlet 4Gamer. Interesting tidbits come courtesy of Nibel on Twitter. This is all surprising given the recent release of Elden Ring, leading people to speculate that it will be a relative departure from their streak of Souls-like games. Perhaps it will be the Armored Core follow-up that many diehards have been asking for. Oh, and here's a random tidbit for you. You know that Nintendo Direct that's happening tomorrow? The one with a bunch of third-party titles? Well, keep your eyes peeled for some new PC game announcements, either coinciding with or directly following that Nintendo Direct. There's one more game announcement I want to talk about, actually, and it's one of those things that I think people are not talking enough about. So Tiny Tina's Wonderland is coming to Steam. Previously, it was exclusive to the Epic Game Store on PC, and it just launched on Steam after less than three months of exclusivity. This seems significant. Up until recently, all the EGS exclusives were for at least a year long term, but Final Fantasy VII Remake came to Steam after 6 months and now Tiny Tina appears after only 3 months. It seems these epic contracts are getting much shorter which is good news for those of you that would rather have their entire library on Steam, which is pretty much all of you I think. What's more is that Epic are updating their online services to have better crossplay with Steam. Epic published a video last week that advertised their new crossplay features, and here's what they had to say in a blog post. Quote, 
To make it easy for players to connect with friends across PC stores, Epic Online Services includes an overlay that merges Steam and Epic Games friends into a single list, as well as an interface to search for friends, send and receive friend requests, and join multiplayer game sessions across stores." End quote. I think these two stories are showing a bit of relaxing from the Epic side and playing more nicely with Steam even as they recently removed Fall Guys from the Steam store. I look forward to seeing how these two stores coexist in the coming years. And finally, I have one more story for today, and again, this is something that no one is really talking about. Valve have talked about wanting to open SteamOS up to everyone, and that includes other handheld PC makers like GPD, Aya, and OneNet. Similarly, these companies have expressed interest in leveraging SteamOS, and now it seems we have the first collaborator with Anbernic. Anbernic is known for their affordable retro handhelds, but their latest device, the Win 600, will be their first foray into the world of x86 handhelds. Over a month ago, we saw leaked screenshots and a video of this handheld with SteamOS on it, but it was unclear if this was going to be officially supported or if it was just for fun. After all, we've seen ETA Prime install Hollow ISO on basically everything. But ladies and gentlemen, this is not simply Hollow ISO on a handheld. No, it's my understanding that this is official SteamOS support support with Valve's collaboration. Valve has not publicly commented on this, but Ambernick recently released two videos confirming support for SteamOS 3, as well as the ability to dual boot with Windows 11. Additionally, multiple people have confirmed to me that Ambernick and Valve are cooperating to make sure this launch goes smoothly. There are still some inconveniences to work out, but it seems that testing is going well overall and the experience is smooth. This is a big first step in making SteamOS available regardless of what hardware is being used. The word is that talks have begun with other companies as well, but as far as I know, Ambernick is the only one that has gotten this far. I have so many things I want to try with SteamOS on a non-Steam Deck device. I want to see how Emudeck runs. I want to try the plug-in loader. I want to see if I can just plug in a micro SD card with my games that I installed from a Steam Deck and see if it just loads. Hopefully I get to try this all out. It's important to note that the Win 600 is being positioned as a budget device and it's going to be way underpowered compared to a Steam Deck. I don't know what the MSRP is going to be yet, but again, it will be underpowered compared to a Steam Deck. I personally think that's good news. I think it's a good test for the operating system to see how viable it is even on low powered hardware. Additionally, I can see a market for a $300 handheld that can play indies like Dead Cells, Hollow Knight, and my favorite, Grapple Dog. That said, they've already shown it playing Resident Evil 4 and Hitman as well, so this device might have some bite yet. Nonetheless, we should be finding out soon as some folks have their Win 600 already, and we should see videos coming out starting tomorrow. All right, that's gonna do it for today's massive news roundup. As always, shout out to a few of my favorite folks over at my Patreon. My new toxic behavior is saving any news that I can't share broadly for my Patreon only. It's not often that I get an exclusive scoop that I can't make a video on, but if I do, I'll put that up on my Patreon. All right, deck gang out. Goodbye.